What's up guys? Saw two day. Nah, normally I film my videos on my wife's camera, but she's uh working today in Phoenix, which is about two hours from here. So you got me on this uh, iPad thing, so we'll see if we can't figure it out. Still morning time, so more coffee to you. God does, I'm gonna need it. It's gonna be a long ass video. Hope y'all bear with me. If you don't, hey, I get it. We all go through those little interest and not interest kind of phases, right? But anywho, if y'all haven't followed Scotch and Things, go follow Scotch and Things. He put out a real heartfelt video this morning. I encourage you to go watch it. <clears throat> uh, he and I exchanged knives a lot. There's only really a handful of people that are really into the same, or really close to the same knives that I am. So Steve and I, our tastes are really close <clears throat> and nice. So anyway, um, I sent him his Sabenza back and his uh, Grismo uh, Norseman back. And uh, he sent me knives I got the same day. I'm kind of going to go through, ah, well, I'll change things up. I got to show you. So he sent me two dire wares. I, he asked me what I want to see. I said, yeah, I, I like to see that dire wear. So the first one he sent was this tail whip. This thing is sick. I'm sure my lighting sucks, but I apologize. But anyway, look at that. Look at that little pocket milling under there. The wood inlay, I'm assuming that's wood. This is a tail whip. This is a sick knife, man. Absolutely gorgeous knife. Action is phenomenal on this thing. It's just it's, it's so fast, man. It's ridiculously fast. Uh, really cool knife. Um, probably the only thing that you could fault on this knife is it's just a flipper. That's about the only fault you could give it. The detent is solid as hell. It's a sick knife. And Steve, I really appreciate me borrow this, man. And I, I will probably end up getting a tail whip. Uh, I love this one. This one is sick. Uh, I can't think of a thing that would change on this one. This is awesome. It's a freaking badass knife. Sick knife. Thanks for letting me borrow that. I had no idea. Like, honestly, before Steve even sent me that, I mean, I've seen it in his videos, but before uh, Steve, I didn't know they even made tail whips. And then they got tail whips too, which are smaller. So I think Steve's got one of those too. Or at least he had adds one. I don't know if he still does or not. And he also sent this, which I thought was a solo 90. This is a hyper 90. A uh, little pocket chode, man. This thing is like a little fat, chunky, just. Oh, oh, so love it, man. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people aren't really into the, the knives that I'm into, the big, thick, ridiculously built knives. It's just my style, man. I just dig it, man. It's just what I like in knives. And we all like what we like. I ain't really got to justify why. It's just, you just like what you like. I like what I like. This is right in my wheelhouse. This thing is so sick. So, if you guys follow me, you know I got this. This is, this is a Solo 90 Hawkbill. But you can see the frame on this one and the frame on the Hyper 90 are, are slightly different. I, mean, I guess I should close them both so you can see it better. <clears throat> Hold them the right way. Ah, there we go. Try to get my shit together. So you can see the frames are slightly different. This one's got a little more contour. It's similar to more like a, it's kind of like more like the frame, like a solo. See how the frame's kind of more contoured like that on that S90 versus the Hyper 90. The Hyper 90 actually has a little more weight to it. They're both about the same thickness. I mean, they're pretty damn close to the same thickness. But the action on this one is just, oh, God, it's like the fastest little flipper, man. It, that thing just flies out of there. dire has got some serious good action, man. Uh, it, the one thing I will say about this one is really hard to manipulate the thumb studs, which is the same as mine. Ugh. I can't even get it. Sorry. I tried. I have done it before. I don't want to beat the hell out of my thumb. Get get through the rest of this video. Uh, this is a sick knife. This is an awesome little knife. Uh I love this one too. This is a fun knife, but it's not nearly as crispy. Like this, it's still a, it's, oh, it's got a good feel too. I don't say it's not as crispy. It's just different. This one here just got a, just such a clean little break and it's so fast, man. It's such a big, thick knife. It's so awesome, man. And like the, the difference styling wise, you can tell this is definitely more of a user and that tail whip, this tail whip is definitely more of a classier knife. Um, at least in my opinion, I mean, we're all different, right? But, uh, Really cool to see that Hyper 90. I freaking love both of those. Like, Direwear is like up on that list for me. Like, the, the, you know, the, the cream always rises to the crop. You always hear that crap, but, but you always hear like overinflated stories about this kind of knife or that kind of knife. Like, but for me, the overbuilt knives is like, so I'll, you know, you, you guys already know I love my Medfords. You know, I love DSKs. Direwear is like right there with them. Like, that's, and they're all three different, but for you, People on the outside looking into bruisers, I know you probably categorize them all the same, but they're really not. They're they all they all have a completely different feel, and uh, for me, the dire wears are like the most 
refined, beastly, awesome knives that I have. Like, I just, I just love them, man. Diorwares are awesome. And I will definitely get more diorwares. Who knows when, but eventually we'll get more diorwares. <clears throat> so this week I've had a lot of loan ins, which is kind of cool because I loan out a lot of knives and I don't usually get a ton loan in, which is my own, you know, my own choice. Like I, I could ask for more knives and people have offered and I could have accepted and that sort of thing. But, uh, uh, Steve did something last time, not this past time, but he sent that Grismo, the Norseman, he sent that as a surprise knife. So like, he didn't tell me what was coming. He said, like, you get a surprise knife coming, which I thought was cool as hell. So I had let Shane pocket knife reviews, uh, see a couple knives. So he's going to send some back. Now he told me what one of them was and I'll show it briefly and, and give them a brief overview. Uh, but anyway, he said he was going to send me uh, one knife and then a surprise knife, which I thought was cool as hell. Cause I like the surprise knives cause I don't know what the hell's coming. I mean, Shane's into knives for a different reason than I'm into knives, so I'm assuming it's not going to be one of the ones that I would already have or had seen, so, which is cool as hell. Like, you know, he asked me, I'd seen a couple, some of them I had, some of them I hadn't, but he surprised me, which I thought was cool, but this is the knife he sent for a surprise, TR4, and this is the one you've seen in his videos, and I don't remember what this says. I'm not that intelligent, so I'm just going to leave it as it. Y'all could probably make it out. Uh, I've never handled a TR4. I didn't know they made one this big. And quite honestly, man, I dig it. I like the hell out of it. And this one must be a fairly older one because it's in CPM D2, which I didn't know. I thought almost everything they make was in 154CM. So I'm assuming it's older. Maybe it ain't. I don't know. Like, maybe they're just talking out my ass like I don't know what to tell them talking about, which is probably the truth. <clears throat> but, I, you know, I'm generally not a huge fan of autos. Uh, I have had quite a few, and they usually come and then go. I just don't really keep them. This one's got enough little, you know, substance to it that I, you know, I could see this one. And honestly, like if I found this in a lefty, that would be a real ideal for me because I like to carry that left side, uh, right beside my wallet. And that would be an ideal knife for the left side coming out, you know, and deploying it. Like obviously you'd have to do it with your thumb, not your finger, but that I dig that like for a left lefty. So, so Shane, I appreciate you letting me borrow this one, man. This is a cool surprise. Dig checking it out. It's, it's a cool ass knife, man. I dig it. Um, and the other thing he sent was, you know, he knows I'm, well, if you watch Shane, you know, he's huge on pro-American, all that other stuff too. Where the hell did I do with the damn, oh, there it is. Uh, he sent basically me just to, to, to get my opinion basically of what this, I think these are effing grows, these fake striders. And just to check it out and see what's going on with it and that sort of thing. So, you know, like, as a knife, like, it's still a good knife. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say it ain't gonna be a, a good knife. It ain't the best knife, but uh, I hate seeing these copies, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, uh, this is the epitome of what I hate about from China. Like, and I know it's a thing of the past and China knives have changed and all that stuff, but I've been in the knife game like on and off, probably like no lie, probably almost 15 years at this point. Used to see this all the time. And that's why my opinion of Chinese knives was, well, I thought they sucked. Like, and then when I got back into knives, now I'm seeing that the, some of the knives from China are legit and are cool and stuff like that. And we'll go get into some of those in a minute here. <clears throat> but generally speaking, Chinese knives don't, don't stay at this house. Oh, you might come, you know, visit for a little while, and they go on. And that's pretty much it. And Shane just wanted me to check this out and get my, get my opinion of it. And honestly, I, for a machine, like looking at it for machine faults and that sort of thing, I think it's like executed well. Like, they still, even being a copy, and I don't know how much this costs, but I would imagine, like, just for machine work, if you just got this machine work done by, you know, somebody here in the States, you're talking a lot of good machine work right there. That's, that's definitely a lot, of, a lot of machine work in it. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to promote copies and I don't think this is going to compare to the original at all, but, um, interesting to look at, I guess. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to get any, any further than that. Uh, it's just something Shane wanted me to check out and I looked at it. So we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> so those are all the ones that got loaned. Oh no, no. I got another one. Hang on a second. So <laughs> if y'all don't follow Nicholas Edward on YouTube and I think it's Nick Edwards on Instagram. Uh, me and him became friends pretty pretty much right away here. Like he he's, he hit me up and let me know he had a channel which I didn't even know about. And then once he did, I was like I watched all his videos. It was just I like me and him kind of relate, you know. Like that's what it is more than anything else. And I sent him a couple, and uh, he sent me a stovepipe to check out. And I don't know if y'all seen this spider coat stovepipe or not. And uh, I've seen it in pictures. I thought it was interesting, but you never can tell in pictures like size wise what something's going to be in that sort of thing. And it is a little guy, dude. Don't get me wrong, it's a little bitty guy. And I had a Spyderco bombshell a while back, which is the same factory that Taiwan, 
tie chum, tie one, whatever it is, factory spider coat. I was always impressed by their work. It's just a nice and small, I don't really generally have a whole lot of, I just don't keep them. It's not that I couldn't use them and don't use them. I like this one a lot more than I like that bombshell. Uh, I don't know what it is about it, man. Something about this knife just suits me. Um, it's interesting because in pictures, you really can't see that this is three different levels right here. So this side, this back side, on this side, is contoured. So let me see if I can show you. Um, maybe you can or maybe you can't. There you go. You can kind of sort of see it right there. It's contoured in the back right here. A nice little radius. And then it kind of steps down. This side's lower, but then this side's another level. So there's three different levels here. It's hard to really, in pictures, you really don't get that, that there's levels right there. And uh, it kind of has like a little step right through there and it kind of sort of is a hot spot right there. And it looks like it would suck to cut with. It really does look like it sucked to cut with. But honestly, when I put it in my hands and I, and I got a choke way up on it, but like, and I haven't cut a ton of stuff with this. Obviously it's not my knife. I've cut up a box. I cut up some chicken feed and that sort of thing. But Nicholas knows all that stuff because he cuts chickens. He does that stuff. So he, I'm sure he's not like, oh my God, you chip, using my knife to cut up feed. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just used it like for general what I would call EDC stuff, but you know, if you don't have chickens and livestock stuff, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So <clears throat> just general stuff around the place, nothing overworking it. It's just, just really regular stuff. And I liked it. I like, I thought, I thought it worked pretty well. Uh, this knife really impressed me. Uh, so much so where I think I might actually pursue a Kingdom Armory. Uh, this is the Spyderco version of that Kingdom Armory design. And uh, I can't remember what his is called. Bill the Butcher, I think, is what he calls us. Or Butcher Bill, or something, something along that. But Kingdom Armory, a lot of his stuff are like sh little short, chody little things like this. And, and uh, this one definitely got my attention. I think I'm going to have to check out a Kingdom Armory. I would definitely look at this one, but, you know, at this point, they're kind of hard to find. I've seen them occasionally pop up and that sort of thing. I wouldn't mind having the Spyderco version of it, but uh, honestly, I'd rather support a, the American-made version of that. That's just me personally. Like, nothing against the Taiwanese people. I just personally like to support American machinists. Because I am one. <clears throat> all right. Um, let's do this. I'm all over the place. I apologize. So yesterday I put a picture up on Instagram of a bunch of my knives spread out. Some of Steve's in there. And I took Nicholas's there with me too. Uh, just to, to do this AZ knife meetup, which is just across town for me about 30 minutes. We had a cool little meetup. Uh, unfortunately, some people got sick. Some people called. So they couldn't show up. So it ended up being a real small, intimate Basically, me, Yonan's Chris, and one of Chris's buddy, or Q Ball Chris, and one of Chris's buddies, Mark. And so it was really small, four of us. Um, kind of sucked because the Yonan's Edge planned for a lot more people. He bought a lot of food and that sort of thing. I felt bad because of that. But we honestly all had a great time. It was a phenomenal time. Uh, you know, sitting bullshitting about knives and that sort of thing. I got to show a bunch of my new ones, which I ain't, I ain't quite got around to, to showing you guys in a minute, but I will. Um, but every time we go to these things, you know, we kind of get more. It starts off with just a nice, and you kind of more towards more personal, and start, yeah, as we know each other more and more and more and stuff. But anyhow, long story short, um, Chris had a huge vet bill. He's trying to sell some nice. He's been trying to sell them. I think about every time I saw him, he's selling nice. But you know, at this point, he needed to recoup some funds, and um, I figured, you know, what the hell? Like I like giving knives away, and the biggest every time I seen these guys, the biggest nice that I always take away from that that I normally wouldn't buy are Tucson knives, Chinese knives. And I figured, what the hell, I'm just going to buy some from them. So I don't know what half these are called or what they are. Matter of fact, um, I'm probably going to send some of these out. And hopefully, like, I'm, I ain't talked to him yet, but I'm going to ask uh, Nicholas Edwards if he wants to see some. Maybe my buddy JD for EDC. Um, maybe the pointy end. I can't remember his name. Daniel, maybe. Uh, I might ask him if he wants to check some out. But anyway, I got a bunch of little stuff that, like, you'll see. So this one here, which I believe, yeah, it says it on there, whatever it is, TS, I can't even read it backwards. What does it say? 38, TS 38. So I believe this one used to be Knife Tastic Rodney's. So Rodney, your old knife is now in my possession. How about that, brother? That's pretty fucking cool, huh? Roundabout way. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, I got these knives basically to play with. And I know like my buddy JD, um, he likes to anodize and that sort of thing. So I thought, especially these ones with like sandblast and polish, that'd be kind of interesting for him to play with. So, I'm probably just going to send him some his ways. Maybe Stella. Maybe if Stella wants to check some of these out. I don't know. These are just the people that I know that do that sort of thing that I like to support what they do. Um, this is a button lock. I don't know which one this is. Um, kind of a little short, stouty, rhino-looking thing. 
Uh, blade is horribly off center ground. Like, I don't know if you can even see that probably that well, but it's it's bad. And uh, Chris even had this one sent out to uh, uh, Neves. And Neves tried to fix it the best he could, but there's just so much stuff you can fix from a secondary point of view. It just needs to be machined better to start with. But all these are interesting as far as design wise for machining because they have interesting textures, interesting machine marks, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, I just wanted to check them out, and I'll, every, like I said, every time I go to one of these meetups, I get kind of in, in, enthralled with checking out different stuff. Now, none of these are what I would consider me knife, so I didn't buy them for me, and I even told Chris as much when I got them. There's another one. What does that one say? 316, and this has got purple anno, which I am not a fan of the purple at all, but I don't know how to use the sandblaster really easy, so it might get sandblasted, and then again, I might let somebody like Stella or somebody else check it out, and Whatever, you know, I, I, whatever, we'll figure it out. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. Uh, minimum, going to give it away. Um, I don't know. May get work done to them and then give them away. I may give them to the person who modifies them. I don't know. I don't know which one this one is either. Uh, and let's see, I don't even know what no blade steals other than this one. This one says S90 on it because it doesn't say anything else on it. But uh, this is an interesting one too. I kind of like this one. Definitely a Persian style. Uh, a lot of these are like, just unique, and I think that's the reason I like the Tucson styles compared to like, you know, like Civivi or Kaiser and that sort of thing. Like, it's not that those don't appeal to me, it's just they're less appealing because they're more mainstream bland. And I like unusual and cool, I don't, or just unusual. It doesn't have just, it doesn't even have to be cool, just unusual is like kind of more of my deal house. Uh, here's another one, another Tucson. I don't know which one this is either, unless it says it on it. 380, TS380. Uh, this is a cool one, this is a little, a little chunkier, it's a little bit thicker, um, but this one actually handles pretty well. I like this one, super lightweight for what it is, too. I didn't bring one of them. Uh, I did get a Kaiser that sheep dog with the tab that comes on and off. Uh, it's in there, I didn't feel like bringing it, or I actually forgot about bringing it. But I got this uh, Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter as well, which I wasn't really you know, I wasn't planning on getting this one, it's just like the more I picked it up and played with it. Uh, I was like, you know, just something about it. It's kind of cool. And my brother always says he loses knives. So I believe I'm going to send this to my brother. It's orange. Uh, if you lose this one, I don't know where the hell you're living at because orange don't blend in with nothing, does it? <clears throat> so I'll probably end up sending this to my brother. But if not, I don't know. Another something to kick around, beat your house. Um, and probably the reason I started all this is this XL, Manix XL. This is just the S30 version. Um, I guess someone else had looked at it. And wanted it, but uh, wanted a better steel or something like something along those lines. But I've I've had a Manix XL in the past. This one was pretty much brand new. Like <laughs> since I've been playing with it, it's breaking in. I think Chris said he bought it and played with it for like one afternoon or something like that, and that's it. It's been in the box pretty much since. So he didn't really get any use out of it, which sucks for him. But full flat, and this thing comes down. If y'all haven't never heard to handle the Manix, like that comes down pretty damn thin for a Manix. That's pretty good. Like. I've always liked that style. I'm not a huge, like, access lock. This is a ball lock, which is, I don't know, somewhat similar, I guess. <clears throat> I've never been super fond of that action, but I haven't had a Spyderco in possession for a long time. Actually, me and Nicholas Edwards were talking about that, too. Uh, I haven't had one for a long time, and I figured, why not? I'll just put one back in the collection for a minute and see what happens. So, I don't know if this one will stay or not, but for right now, I'm definitely going to keep it, and I think if nothing else, it'd be a good left-hand pocket knife for me, anyhow. Uh, I told you got the sheep dog. I should have got it, but I forgot it. It's in a separate case, which I didn't take it out of it for some reason. I don't know why. <clears throat> uh, and then this other one is a cold steel that I was going to buy, but Chris, like, you know, you're always giving stuff to people. I'm going to give you something too. So he ended up gifting me this, which is a Recon 1 S35 and the hollow ground. This is a, the main bevel, and this was hollow. But, you know, if you don't know, uh, they, they've they used to do flat, then they did a hollow, then they went back to flat. So now they're flat. But um, I'm more of a fan of the hollow, especially in this Tanto. Like, it's just, it's a nice, nice, nice edge transition. I like this one. So another little Recon 1. I last one I gave away was to a buddy of mine at work. He needed a knife. So I had a drop point version. I gave it to him. So nice to have another Tanto. I dig this one a lot. This is definitely, definitely one of my favorite Tantos that I've got now. Like, and it's kind of cool to have cold steels again. Like, I've got my 4 Max, but... The smaller ones are, are, are equally as useful for me. I like them a lot, a ton, actually. Uh, so it's really cool to have that. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I guess recapping the, the whole 
AZ Knife meetup thing. It was less people, but more intimate. We got to sit around and bullshit and know each other a little bit better. It was a fun time. Always a blast with them guys. We'll be doing it again like every four months. So once again, if you're around the AZ area and you want to meet up with us guys, you never know who's going to show up. There's like probably 10 people in the group now and only four people showed up. So it could have been bigger. It could have been smaller. It doesn't really matter. You're just sitting around and bullshit with knife people, which is always cool as hell, right? To me, it is. Anyhow, like that's the whole point of, I guess, me doing this to a camera and then comments later. Like it's just kind of cool to conversate about knives, right? But we all like different things. Ironically, that's funny because I'm about to show you this couple of DSKs I got. Um, so, you know, we all look at knives for different reasons. This is like one of these knives I showed uh, Chris. He immediately, oh, it's off center, but it's locked up sight. Like I was thinking maybe I need to tighten the pivot. But it's funny how like a certain, pick up a knife. Like I'm just using Chris as an example. Chris picked up the knife. He knew he goes through a checklist in his own mind that's different than what I would do. And then handed a knife to anyone's edge and he didn't like where the pocket clip was for and he knows these guys notice these things right away bam right like they're later on it man so like it's kind of funny because i'm not that way at all i'm one of those guys that i got to play with a knife for a while to form an opinion to tell you what i think about it it's kind of why i don't do reviews because more than likely if i go on video saying something i'm gonna probably change my mind on it like i'm not always 100 percent like this is this is rock solid i'm i'm this is my opinion about that almost never is that, that way for me like if y'all don't know me, like, I, I change my mind a lot. Uh, but, you know, I think that's cool. A cool perspective when you get a meeting like that is to get that instant feedback from people that notice stuff that you wouldn't notice right away. It's not that you wouldn't notice, but, hmm, you know, that's probably why, especially at Young's that's why he's good at doing reviews because he notices stuff a much shorter time level than it would me. Uh, you know, all perspective. So last week I had showed you that I got this badass motherfucker right here. Uh, this is a VXC. Uh, unfortunately, God, God, it's in hellish rain. Let me see if I can get, might be able to see a couple little spots right here. I caught, caught some rain in between going from the sheen shop to the our own business job to an appointment. And I had to work in wet britches for the rest of the day. So I got a couple of rust spots on it, which sucks ass. But, you know, man, I bought this. This one is particular. Like, we all have our methods, this front, this, the, the reverse flick on this one, or finger flick, or whatever you want, booger flick it, whatever you want to call it. On this one, is just shit. And this is, the, this is the one that's on the phosphor bronze. And I told you I'd ordered that sister knife, and then last week I showed you the pink slip for it. <clears throat> so this one does have a story behind it too, but, so I got, basically, it's a sister version of the same thing. So it's got the same little skull laser engraved in it. I dig the shit out of that skull, man. Let's see if I can get it a little closer so you guys can see a little... And it's got actual texture to it too. I don't know if it's hard to, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's, it, man, it's got cool texture. It's just a badass. This one looks like it could be a regular anode. But it's, it's hard to see. It's all flamed. You can see how, right in this lock bar relief how it's flamed. So on the sides, you kind of get that natural looking almost tie and bronze. And on the inside, it's blue again. I'll back up so you can see it. I'll see, see through it, see it's blue. But look at the interesting texture on that too. Look at the textures. So neat, man. This is the one that Ewan's Edge immediately hated the pocket clip on. I'm pretty, pretty sure as soon as he picked it up, he noticed it. He just don't like the pocket clip up high. Me, I put this in my hand. I don't feel it at all. Like, he was talking about immediately he didn't like it. I, but we all different. This is a thumb flipping night for me. This one is on bearings, and it is pretty damn, pretty damn snappy. It's a pretty badass knife. So this one... This is a shout out to DSK, and I probably should do a video. I will do a video about all the DSKs and more in detail and that sort of thing after I've had a chance to play with them. <clears throat> I got this on Monday. I had to go pick it up from the post office. During that work that day, the, the detent fell out. I was playing with it. I didn't see it. I don't know what happened to it. The bearing fell out. Fuck, man. Motherfucker. Detent fell out. Shit. I can't believe that happened. So I just, I actually have his uh, cell phone number, so I texted him. I said, hey, man, the the detent fell out. I was like, man, if you just tell me what size ball, I'll go get ball, and I'll, I'll press one in myself. He's like, fuck no, send that thing back. I'm like, all right, cool. So put it in the mail Tuesday morning. It got to him Wednesday afternoon, and it got back to me Thursday. That's how quick it was. Now, granted, he only lives probably 100 miles from here, and I don't just, I don't know him. Like, I, I, he, I mean, we've talked a, a few times, but I don't know him other than DSK Nice Dan. Like, I you don't know who the fuck I am. Like it, it, we're just so I'm saying like this is be normal customer service to to turn a knife around. Now granted he just got it, and it is that's that I'm glad to see that he made the time to do it. But how much better of customer service can you get? Like my buddy JD for EDC was talking about how shitty Kaiser's 
uh, warranty service is. They didn't want to see the knife. This guy literally took the knife and as soon as he got it, fixed it and sent it right back to me. And didn't charge me a cent for shipping, none of that bullshit. I watch, you know, I'm just making it full disclosure. I paid to ship it to him, he paid to ship it back to me. More than happy with that, more than happy. This thing is money. There's not a damn thing wrong with it. It's so nice. Like So whatever he did to fix it, I'm assuming just put some new detent in it. I don't know what broke it. Could have been me. Could have been the knife. I don't know. I'm not a machine shop, so I'm not like super delicate with shit. Even new knives. I know I should be, but I'm not. But I'm super happy to get that one. So obviously two-tone blade. This is a GF1 mod. And uh, this also has the thicker blade stock. So both of these last two, the sister knives. What am I going to call the sister skulls? The sister skulls both have that nice, big, chunky, thick, nasty blade compared to, say, this is my original kickstand in Damascus. So you can see it's the 3 16 versus the quarter. So this is still a beast. This is an absolute beast, no doubt about it. But compared to these guys, like, this is a much chunkier knife. <clears throat> and even compared to the, this is the GF2, so you can see the size-wise, you can see the kind of lineage. I'm trying to get my finger down and drop the damn thing. You see it's a little bit smaller of a knife. This is a, still a sick knife, too, but... This is a, a much chunkier, beefier knife, and especially with that thicker blade. And I think when he does the thicker blades, he just does G10 on the one side. Which, you know, I'm generally not a huge G10. I like full tie, but in both of these, it doesn't bother me a bit. There's enough weight there. There's enough feel there. And the pattern he put on them, I don't know what he calls the pattern, or if he even has a name for it. And then the holes in it, it just works, man. Everything about this knife, both these knives work for me. Truly will. Uh, and that's, that's my opinion, right? Like, I know... <laughs> when, I, when I get these knives or let these guys at the knife meet up, you know, they indulge me. they like, yeah, it's cool, Dave. You're a freaking idiot. <laughs> but, I mean, they don't say that, but I, I can almost see it in their face. They're kind of like, you're an idiot. I can't believe you pay that much for that and then have that kind of knife. I mean, I'm just putting words in people's mouths, but you know what I mean? Like, I know I'm in my, in my own little day's world, if you will. But I really do enjoy um, the DSKs, and that is definitely in my wheelhouse. Um, unfortunately, Matt wasn't able to show up. Um, so I know, like, uh, already said condolences to Scott Stang, Steve. Uh, uh, also, Scott from Casey Blade Drip. Uh, I know he is going through very similar stuff. I uh, uh, hope you're doing good, too, brother. Um, but I know Matt, his wife, or, or Matt's wife, not Matt, his wife, is going through a little bit of a hard time right now. So hope you're better soon, Kate. Um, to wrap this whole thing up, which I'm almost at 30 minutes now, so... Apologize. Um, I don't know the details yet, and everybody's not everybody, but a lot of people have done um, stuff for Jason Brown, and the EDC Roundtable is hosting a raffle for it. I don't know the details yet. I think the details are supposed to be released tomorrow. I was going to text Stevie before I started this, but I did not. I was not prepared. And this is the morning, and you know, fuck it. It is what it is. Um, let me grab these real quick. So my contribution for that, uh, and I'm sure it'll come out. I, 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 Pretty much every time I give a knife away, I, I say the same thing. Like, if you want to tell people I gave you a knife, that's fine. If you don't, I don't give a shit. I didn't give it to you to get publicity. I gave it to you because I wanted you to have it. And that goes for everybody I've ever given a knife to. <clears throat> so, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just showing you what I offer for the raffle. And I'm sure Stevie will do something to show what you can win or packages or whatever else. <clears throat> but I'm going to start this in the lineage that I got these and we'll go backwards. I'll explain kind of why. So me and Brass Brigade Jason became friends, I don't know, a year and a half ago, something like that. And uh, he designed the, the grippers. And, you know, if you know me, you know this really isn't in my wheelhouse for a style knife. I really have truly enjoyed having this knife. This is a truly cool-ass knife. This is the custom. This is made by SG. This is not inexpensive. There are scratches on this blade, and this blade has been used. You can see it on Eonan's Edge as a review, and you can see it on JD for EDC as a review. Both of them talked about this knife. Um, it's a cool-ass knife. That's knife number one that's going to go on mine, and mine's going to be actually the triple gripper package, and you'll see why here in a second. So this is the um, custom version SG Nags made. This one is the prototype that Best Tape made to get the production one made. Um, I did put my own bearings in this one, different bearings in this one, and Eon's Edge actually reminded me of that because I left a note in it, and I totally forgot. Uh, it's mostly what the the production one is there are some slight variants and i just thought it was cool as hell i actually won this at an auction from jason and that's number two knife so that's the first one the second one which is a prototype and then finally the production and uh this knife has been on grumpy grunts 
Andy Onan's Edge, the production one, or the prototype one is. And this is the production knife. I mean, this, one, this one is uh, all black. It does have scuffs on the side of that blade where it kind of rubs the frame a little bit. But you can see the action is pretty good on it. A uh, few little changes, but production version. So these three will be up on the raffle for um, Jason Brown and through EDC Roundtable. Uh, I don't know the details yet. Stevie will probably enlighten you guys, but if you're interested in winning in these, and these are going to be one prize pack. I don't know how many prize packs there are, but I've heard 30. I don't know if there may be more, maybe less. I don't know. Uh, all the original stuff that I got with them. So, like, the production one just came in that, and the Best Tech uh, prototype came in that, and the SG's kind of box. It's all detailed. But anyway, I'll put all them in a box, ship them to whoever wins that auction. That's it for me for the week. I've rambled like a motherfucker. You guys going through hard times, you know we are all here together, always. Like, you need something, holler at me, for sure, no matter what. Uh, and, and, and transversely, you know, I feel the same way too. So, uh, once again, shout out to Steve. Uh, hope you're well, brother. Um, and uh, we're going to leave it there. All right, see y'all later.